The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this Friday, the Friday, the 5th of July. I hope everyone had a good 4th. We're looking at the Dow down 73. Now, this is important because it got repelled right at that resistance level. Uh, it's at 39,233. How next week unfolds is going to be very important. And let me go through what I'm looking at here. So the S&P made a new all-time high. It's at a new time, new all-time high as we speak at 5540.28 up 355. We're looking at the Q the uh, QQQ all-time high as we speak at 493.26 up 222. The IWM got repelled just like the Dow did at the resistance level. So it's a little weak yet yeah, minus 149 at 200.34. It was really important going into day, today's close at 4 o'clock that there was at least a really good chance that the nine-period moving average would flip to green. It hasn't. It's still pink. So this is still a work in progress. If you look at the weekly chart, it's just going sideways. But it is the small caps, and the small caps really need to get back on track for the entire market to have a much broader rally uh, in the summer. And we're looking at the uh, SMH as the semiconductors, which are now down 31 cents at 269.35, having had a pretty nice rally up to 272.05 this morning. I'm calling this a gray leg C because the MACD is still weak, the relative strength is weak, the stochastic is weak, the unbalanced volume is weak, yet the nine period moving average is still strong. I'm anticipating that going into this coming week, we get a test of all these areas that are very important. For instance, Microsoft, an all time high as we speak. Leg E in a daily chart, 467.07 was the high. Um, it's gone way above every day for the past one, two, three. For at least the past three sessions, we've had higher highs going to all-time highs. And that, to me, is important because it's, it's activating a particular technique in the weekly chart that says, hmm, go a little bit higher and you don't have the um, Chapman Wave stalk leg formation anymore, with this being the neck you actually might be having in the weekly chart, and I drew this in. I've been using this technique quite a bit lately. Uh, when I say lately, I mean over the past five, six months, actually. It's this one-to-one -one extension, and it's a particular technique, and that would take the, the Microsoft to a target of, uh, let me see, 400, and let's call it 490. And today's high is four. Uh, 67, is that correct? I need to double check that because I could be wrong. I'm looking at, I'm sorry, 470, I was going to say 490, that looks really, really uh, 470. Well, we went to 467.07 today. You've got another two, three points to go. That's an extent. It doesn't mean to say it's going to stop there, but it does mean to say that if you use this particular technique, which is a technique which has been working very well, let me just go to the, if I can. To the, so, first of all, going to a peak D is very important in the Chapman Wave methodology. If it's in a buy signal, upgrade it to a buy mode. It means that it should go to at least four higher peaks. Peak A is the first peak. B is the second peak. Uh, C is the third. Peak D is the fourth. It can go to E, F, and G. It can go to six higher peaks. Uh, but that's not the point. The point is what happens right here at D. Well, in this case, we went to a D. We pulled back for one bar, two bars actually, and the second bar went to a higher high, and that I'm calling a leg E. Now, what's really important about this, it also has a leg E in the weekly chart, and that E, I, I've been able to do this now. I'm going to go to the NDX one. Well, I'll go to the QQQ first of all. Look, the QQQ made a peak D right here in March. I didn't put it in, but it's March, the week of the 22nd. At 449.34, it comes down quite sharply and starts a brand new move. That brand new move has all the all the characteristics of a new a brand new leg to the upside. Even though it's on the second leg to the upside, it's got those characteristics that I like to uh, consider 
as important if you're in a buy signal that's upgraded to a buy mode. And everything about it with a stochastic in the weekly chart at 93% and the MACD having crossed positive, uh, the 9 is way over the 14. All of this suggests, you know, it's going to take a lot to get down below the 418 or whatever that low was, uh, 413.07, that was the low of the 19th of April. I'm considering that this is really a B in the weekly charts. That means we're in a buy mode. Okay. Now, the re why did I just take a little time to talk about that? If you look at the NDX 100, now, remember, NDX uh, is the the QQQ, is the Invesco QQQ Trust Series. It's the trading vehicle for the NDX. And here we go. That's what I've already done. Peak D, I'm calling this a leg B. The technicals are all very good. Now, the big question is, what are we in the daily? Is this an is this an F? So that is not an A, but this is a continuation of the nine period moving average over the 14. You know, I everything about this is suggesting that this could well be a B. I'm calling it a B for now, saying that it's next week that we get some kind of a top. Now, let me go back to what I was talking about in Microsoft, because Microsoft is an important part of the index. It's an important part of the S&P. It's an important part of the, of the Dow. So here we go. Microsoft trading at uh, 465 look at this well above the nine period moving average it broke the trend line resistance it's the nine is over the 14 nine support is a four uh 455 uh, 456 the uh, black 14 period moving average is 451 the macd is still positive the relative strength is still very good uh, the stochastic is flat at 94%. The on-balance volume is a little bit overboard, meaning you can have a pullback at any stage of this particular move right now. So all the daily chart characteristics are very positive. Wait a minute. All the all the daily part, the weekly parts of the Microsoft technicals are part. Look, the price is way above the nine-period moving average green. The green nine period moving average is way above the 14 period moving average. The MACD crossed positive uh, a couple of weeks ago. The stochastics flat at 93%, actually climbing at 93%. On unbalanced balance volume is a little bit overbought. Nothing wrong here. So there are the two patterns. The one is when you've got the long oval pattern, that becomes a stalk leg formation with a neck. And this becomes the neck. And when the beak uh, unfolds, it should take, it should test 433.60, which was the high back on the 23rd of May. And then it could even go to the 431 level, which is the uh, top between March and April. So as it stands right now, nothing wrong with this. This is still very good action. Look at the monthly chart. That's a leg E after two, two bar. Now, one bar rest, the second bar of the monthly chart went to another high. This is a leg E. Um, it could actually be an instant restart, E slash A. This is really positive for Microsoft. It happens to be in the AIQ area. So uh, I should mention just uh, for disclosure purposes, we are long. Subscribers are long at 338. There it is at 465 Microsoft. But we also long the AIQ, and it's at an all-time high as we speak. That's the Global X Artificial in. Um, intelligence ETF and I've got this as a peak C, a leg C in the weekly chart. So far, everything is still positive. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Dow's down 90, SB's up three. Be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, 
charts and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hello, right, so we're back. Pals and Trap and Tiger Connection. So our Dow's down 111, SP's up 1. And we're looking at Palantir, PLTR, Palantir Technologies, trading up 1 at 26.93. A number of people asked me about this, and I wanted to show you. This is very interesting. Um, that peak D that was made back in June, within three bars, tested the high, and I call that an instant restart, and that becomes E slash A, F slash B. Then there's a pullback, and this new high that we're looking at right now, recovery high, that is, uh, daily chart, I've called this now a peak C, using that as an instant restart. It turns out to be a leg C in the weekly chart about to test the high that was made back in February or March, what was that? March, the week of the 8th, uh, 27.50, and the high today is 20, round number 26 open, and 26.98 leg C. In uh, the daily and leg C in the weekly, and it was a peak D uh, back in March, and that in the monthly chart, and it would become an E if there's a move, one penny above, or as I say, 20, I just said 26. I think it said 27.50. Is that right? Yeah, 27.51 starts a leg um, E in the weekly chart, so a monthly chart. That's really good action, and it puts the whole area of support at 20. I, I put it at 20 between 26 and 24.50. That should be a containment area on any pullback. Now, the reason why I thought it would be a good idea just to show this right now, even though I had questions about it and I was going to do it a little later, I wanted to show it now because in the tech area, look, AVGO, that is Broadcom, is trading right now. Very nice move up. It's given back some of the gain. But that daily chart is still with a nine period moving average over the 14. Weekly chart is still very strong. Monthly chart is still very strong. So even though I'm saying that I think the semis are taking a breather, um, even NVIDIA, which uh, had a nice open and now it's down 1.51, has stalled. If you look at the SMHs, it has had a rally. Uh, the rally is with the technicals really quite weak. Only the nine period moving average, my technical indicator of last resort, is still very strong, and that's been helping. So my anticipation is, based on a number of things, let's look at Amazon. We looked at Palantir. That's in the smaller cap of the tech sector that's had a lot of favorable coverage. 
uh, you're looking at leg E. This is Amazon. There's your D. This is leg E right now. And that is in the daily. I've got this as a leg B in the weekly, and that corresponds to all the all the technicals. Now, I was asked about the index 100 and the QQQ. They weren't exactly symmetric, but if you look at this, I could be totally wrong, but I'm going to call this the top back in April in the weekly chart of Amazon, and that now we're in a buy mode, a second buy mode, that is a buy mode in the daily that's led over to the weekly chart in leg B, the MACD's very close at zero. So it's, the histogram is zero. It's almost ready to cross positive. We've got until the end of the day to see if it does it this week, but it might do it next week. And it's leg C in the monthly. So this still, for 2024 is still a very positive chart. Apple um, Apple is trading an all-time uh, all high, I think, finally. Yep, uh, leg, well, this could be an extension going to leg D. Um, in the daily, leg C in the weekly, and a leg C in the month. In the monthly, this is really good action. Let's go to Google. A uh, Google is trading in the daily chart. Now here's another instant restart. Um, this is A B C D instant restart, E slash A and F slash B. But it's so strong that I have to really give it the benefit of the doubt just for the moment. And I'm saying. I don't see any reason why on a purely technical basis everything doesn't comport with this being in leg B in the daily. It will change if at any point in the next week it suddenly goes from 191.24 up 3.85 right now and it starts trading under 182. You never know. If that happens, that's serious. In the weekly chart, I've got G slash C. It, it could even be a C. It doesn't matter. There's an instant restart. It's very strong. All-time high, and the uh, monthly chart is in leg E. Looking at uh, Netflix and FLX, there we go, Netflix. Um, all, oh, as we speak, all-time high at 689.67 by a whisker. Oh, 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 I don't, I shouldn't say that. It might be right on the button. So the button is 20th of June. It goes to 689.87. Point eighty-eight. It is fourteen cents away. Oh, fourteen cents away from an all-time high. But I've got it as leg B to become leg C if it goes one penny higher than that. So the, everything seems to fit very nicely here. It's one of the reasons we got out of all short positions. I said no. I see um, both in some sectors internal strength with residual strength. Some sectors I see kind of residual strength. The, the, the key internals are starting to weaken a little bit, but we are looking at um, very good action. Okay, we're done with that. Now I wanted to show you GDX is doing very nicely today. It's in leg B in the daily chart. Uh, the monthly chart, uh, it could be called, I don't know what, it could be called gray A or it's going up towards an F, but it's, it's improving, the weekly chart. The monthly chart, this chapter wave inside track repellent zone has just been Lethal. It's just pull back the market vectors, gold miners, ETF, over and over and over. There's almost like a, I wouldn't call this a matching time sequence with a cup formation and then a second cup formation. That's way longer. But it is two, they're going to the downtrend resistance zone, travel wave inside track re repellent zone. Um, it's kind of matching in a certain sense. But if you look at the weekly chart, that nine period moving average is just so strong. And that says, look at the monthly chart to see if it corresponds, and it does. So when I said that I'm starting to become quite positive on gold, that is my stance right now. Um, I, I'm liking the um, gold contract. This is on a shorter term basis. The weekly chart is more intermediate term. It's improving, um, even though the price looks really good right now. I have to say, yeah, could this be a... Um, head and shoulders pattern? Sure, it could be. I just don't see it right now. Let's look at silver. SLV is a silver contract. This is the uh, ETF for silver. It broke out of the inside track repellent zone. Let's see if it's the same thing in SI. It sure is. Look, there it is. Now you can see it. Look at that break today to the upside. Now it's the day is young. The week is young. Uh, anything can happen between now and 4 o'clock. But it does look like the SL, the silver contract, continuous contract, has started, if I can just do this right now, and that, that's going to take me to the currencies in a moment. I had a question, and I'll get to it. A, 
B, C, leg C in the in the daily chart. It was a peak E in the weekly chart, and here you've got rising um, head and shoulders. So this is a little different, and the monthly chart is still really very good. So silver is I can still consider it to be stronger than. Um, Gold, we, we actually have a silver stock that's done very nicely over the last couple of days. Um, let's just go to um, the dollar. The dollar has been pulling back the last few sessions. And again today, down 28 cents at 105.07, peak E. And I wouldn't be surprised if on a short-term basis, the 200-period moving average of 104.50 has a chance of being hit. We're at 105.07. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Dow's down. 94 as of these up two and a half. Be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, so Meta was, uh, I, I missed that in my lineup looking at, oh, Meta, I should have not done that. 
Manta, I'll go to my major chart. Yeah, so there's your peak D. Remember peak D in the Chapman methodology? That's where other things can happen. You see in the one-minute chart, at about 9.30, that's where we got that peak D. Pulled back below the 200 period moving average. Went to a peak D at 9, just after 10 o'clock. And now we've gone to peak C1, C2. And we, as we speak, we're in leg D to the upside. Walk in the nine period moving average. It looks to me like the weekly chart is going to try, I don't know if it can, try to go to the 5605.25 uh, level to start a leg D. Sometimes it's going to try to do that. Right now it's stalling and it means it needs a little time to rebuild strength. So let's go back here. We're looking at META, META. I don't know why they changed these names, really. META platforms. Uh, internet resource information starts a leg D, uh, C in the monthly chart if it can go to 530.71 over the high that was made in March it's in leg C in the uh, weekly C all of the things are coinciding I like that that means that these are all brand new buys signal to buy mode in the weekly charts that's important and the daily chart has got this left side I typed this in I showed it to subscribers recently You've got the left side, right side price time match going to Wednesday that should have hit 531.49. That was the high about the 9th or so of April. In fact, we didn't get there, but today we are very close. We're at 525.93, six points away, less than six points away. In leg E on the daily chart, look at that beautiful cup formation. So that's acting very well, very close to an all-time high. So with that said, a uh, couple of questions. I'm going to get to them now. Taiwan Semiconductor, TWSM. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Did I? Where did I type that? Taiwan Semiconductor. Is that Taiwan Semiconductor? No, T, uh, TWM. Isn't that Taiwan? Yeah, Taiwan Semi is T. Whoops. Process. Wait, why am I suddenly blanking out? TSM. There we are. Taiwan Semi, uh, just about all time high. 184.86 was the all time high back in mid June. Made a cup formation. Now it's peak A, peak B is gray B because if it goes above that peak D for an all time high, that means you can call it E slash B if it's now or C if it's uh, after a pullback. So this is very positive. And the weekly chart. As basically, it's the same thing. Could this have recycled? Could this be not an F slash C, but really it's a C? The way I'm looking at it, I don't want to do anything quickly, but I, I want to say just off the top of my head right now, the way the MACD has acted, bouncing off the slow move, the slow moving average, bouncing off the no, fast moving average, bouncing off the slow moving average, the trough in the stochastic, the MACD. Um, is really important because it's still very strong and the 9 is way over the 14 and the, and the price is way over the 9. I have to consider this as a C and that's the reason I didn't want to go back into trying to short the semis because I think there's still residual strength. That's what I'm saying. I'm starting to see a little bit of internal weakness with residual strength and that's what we've got to monitor. Uh, question came, where did it go? I wrote it down. Yeah, so I need to do this. Um, every once in a while, Without really doing anything, it's just serendipitous. Um, I mean, I'm with people, and it's just the conversation kind of goes here, goes there. And usually, I don't know. I don't know most of the people. I'm not a big kind of walk in and say, I'm Basil. I just kind of, I'm a background guy. So um, I, I had ended up talking to a couple of people, and I. Uh, and I'm talking to this person who's an accountant. And all of a sudden, I found out that there's a high degree of, in the, in the business that he represents or he, uh, that he does, you know, accounting for, um, lithium. Well, we start talking lithium. Well, it turns out, you know, I didn't realize that, but lithium comes from water. It's in water all the time, but it comes from some some the degree in different parts of the world, the degree of amount of lithium is really um, dependent on many things. So you don't ever know whether or not it's going to be a very low degree of lithium and whether it's high. And then in the North American part, it's really a powder. But in other parts, like I think, uh, was it Peru, Chile, South America, um, it's liquid. 
So I'm discussing it with him, and it turns out this one uh, mine has, ah, let's just say, they're projecting that it, at this point it's it's doing so much business, but there's a 60,000, whatever it is, that however you measure it, coming up. But there is such a demand that, in fact, that could shrink it. So all of a sudden, the four-year outlook could be two years. You never know. It could be less. So I'm putting that in the back of my mind. I say, oh, yeah, lithium, right? And, uh, yeah, so I go through all my lithium charts, uh, lithium trading had a fabulous Friday, and I thought, gee, this looks good. And then I said, whoa, wait a minute. We've seen this before. Something happens. There's a big spike. We had that a few weeks ago, and then, boop, it comes back and makes a lower low. That's the lithium is the LIT, is the Global X Lithium and Battery Tech. So I, I never take what I'm hearing and I put it into the market. I believe anything that anyone tells you or whatever you hear, just I know this from having met so many CEOs over the years, and when I actually talk to them, and usually they don't know what I'm doing, I, what I do, what I, I just talk to them as if I'm a regular barbecue or whatever it is. <laughs> um, and it seems to me that a lot of the time the CEO is so busy running the business that they actually have no clue as to what the stock does. Whatever they think it's going to do invariably does something different. That's just my, and this is all anecdotal. I wouldn't, but I'm putting this together and I'm saying, well, this is very interesting. I've got to keep this in the back of my mind because um, those lithium stocks did have nice session. And today I was about to say, oh, let's start a position. And then I thought, whoa, 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 you never do that. You can't listen to somebody who's not even giving you advice or anything. It's just telling you about the business and you're extrapolating and doing things. And then you look at the chart and it looks great and you say, oh, man. So then I decided I won't do anything, but it's on my list of things to do. Now, this happens to coincide with someone else that I was talking to who's been over uh, maybe 15 years now on and off, but mostly on with a particular business that's in the electronic field. So pretty much major components uh, that you would name come from them. And I just said to him, you know, well, how is this affecting the EV area? Because how do, you, how do you know what to build and how do you know what to say, let's wait? And he says, that's exactly the conundrum we have. I don't know if he said conundrum. That's exactly the position we have right now. We are very confused. We don't really know because there's a lot of weakness and there's, there's some strength. But you don't know who the companies that are going to fold, who the ones that are going to remain. And I think, isn't that interesting? Because if you look at even a Tesla, look, Tesla on its own is good. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? 
Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times the daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. Look at this. It's a chance that the uh, E Mini is walking the nine period moving average in the uh, uh, five minute chart and the 10 minute chart. Isn't that nice? Okay, so what we're looking at here is so Tesla. So, Tesla, it seems to me that a, a company that already has the whole infrastructure has a huge part of what many companies, automobile companies and battery companies are looking for. It's, it's a viable entity. And that's the reason why I had said a long time ago, I would actually never short Tesla. I'd probably be looking more towards trading upside biases. Um, and this is spectacular action. Just uh, about two and a half, three weeks ago, it's tootling along at 170, and here it is at 248. This is really good. And this is a single leg a, a D. It's gone all the way, and this is still D every day, even today. I think tomorrow maybe it's a bit of a rest. Uh, Monday, it's a bit of a rest. But fabulous action, leg C in the weekly. Now, this brings me to something else that I'd forgotten. That I'd, I, I, There was someone else there. <clears throat> Who I had uh, discovered, met him a couple of times before, I never remember his name. Um, he is he's semi retired. Uh, he's with, uh, I don't want to mention the name, a major, major institution here in the Boston area. And he does research, uh, it does research into uh, fusion. And um, we were discussing things. Of course, most of us, a little bit of it goes right whoosh, over my head, but that's not the point. I'm trying to get the gist of it. Basically, what we both came to the conclusion about was looking at the history of innovation. And this is something I've discussed here for, I don't know, ever, forever, way back in the early 2000s when I was with my friend at the auto show and he said, oh, he looked at the uh, Prius and he said, oh, that's the way to go. And he said, that's the only way to go. Another, another 10, 10, 15 years, he said, everything will be electric. And I said, no, 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 no. It takes 50 years for infrastructure to develop from a concept to where someone can just press the button or turn the key, and that's all you have to do. You don't have to know how it works or anything like the cell phone. You just hit the button and it works. Uh, yeah, he said, no. Well, I mean, this is tw um, 20, this is now, this is over 20 years or 20 years, and we're even not even close to infrastructure, right? So the, we, the conclusion we came to is that all the things that have been worked on that could create energy and resources, and that even includes uranium, it takes a long time for it to become the core, become the jour, become the thing that you use all the time uh, because it's ubiquitous, it is everywhere. Everything else has been sur surpassed or supplanted. And that, that, that makes it um, very interesting because it says that AI, and then we got into AI discussion, other people asked him about AI. It's kind of the same thing. It's just taking another medium, a little bit of much, not a little, but a lot more speed. But basically, basically at this point, it's still the human brain that is guiding and directing and how you can um, commoditize whatever the product is. So I thought I just wanted to bring that to the to the to the focus this morning by saying Tesla is saying I and it's not just Musk, it is Musk, but it isn't just Musk, it is the concept 
of what Musk has done by introducing areas that are so pertinent to our next phase. And with the, the conclusion that all of us came to is that the government can suggest or, or, or uh, make regulations as much as they want. If the industry isn't ready, we've seen that with the automobile industry, and the irony is that the fuel consumption is the best that automobiles have done ever. And yet this is the exact moment where they're about to be supplanted by something else, and that almost all of us came to the conclusion that uh, um, a hybrid at this particular point makes the most sense. I just wanted to say it's kind of fascinating. Maybe you'll find it interesting, maybe not. And fortunately, um, I like to take the, you know, I remember I, I just up until a few moments ago, I had forgotten about the conversation. It was absolutely so important about uh, fusion, etc. cetera. Um, but there it is. I brought it up and I just needed to discuss it just to, because to air it out and think it through, it helps me as well. So if you look at uh, Tesla and you look at, say, uh, Rivian, just different they are in different phases of their life cycle. If Rivian has a life cycle, this is still in the very early fa phase. The 149.47 November 2021 month for IPO monthly high, um, I think it's going to take a little while before we get there. All right. So with that said, next question came in. Could I look at, where was it? Where was it? It was this side, that side, that side, this side, that side. Oh, yeah. Um yeah, WHR. WHR, Whirlpool, had had a surprise a move to the upside. I say surprise because the earnings looked like, you know, it wasn't so. And then all of a sudden, uh, on the 24th, it's doing a tootling along in the, in the 90, what was that? Let me just give you the exact price right here, 90... Uh, 92.36 and 90.86 was the low. The next day, kaplop, yeah, on the 25th, it goes down to the 86.96 area. And the very next session, it gaps up and it has this incredible, almost like a Roman candle. Ooh, often, uh, uh, after the fourth, we talk about Roman candles, a little independence there, moving up like that. And what happens? It goes above it, hasn't closed above it, but it's in the upper range. So Whirlpool is saying... <sighs> The pattern that I'm forming, this is Whirlpool talking, the pattern that I'm forming is, is becoming a lot more positive, but at the same time, it is much more news-related than technically related. If you're looking at the weekly chart, that is, the 9 is still way under the 14. If you look at the daily, there's the technical part that says, no, 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 on the short-term basis, this is good action. So the Whirlpool takes me to Toll Brothers. And the question I had over the weekend and when I, I was looking at the charts, because tomorrow I'll be, oh, tonight, probably I'll do my uh, weekly market review uh, video. And I always show these charts. So look at wood. This is wood, the iShares. That's down at the bottom. If you look at high-grade copper, I usually put them together because both are, are international economies that we look at. Um, high grade copper had a nice move up in the last uh, week. Very nice move. So, but it's down at the lower end. So now I'm going to go to Toll Brothers and say, wait a minute, Toll Brothers um, hasn't broken down, but it's certainly from the 135.37 high of 13.5 uh, on the 13th of May, come down to 109. I would say 30 points, almost about a 17, 18 percent correction. It's only a correction right now. Uh, that's pretty serious, but I have to let the week finish today and look at this almost like an H pattern that took out the left side low of April. This is saying to me that you cannot rule out that the home building sector, and here I'm going to go to Lenar. Lenar is down at lows, having hit the 170s. Here it is at 142. Uh, pretty serious pullback, but look at this KBH, KB Homes. Uh, KB Homes, which is really much a weaker, uh, KB Homes is kind of has been a, a weaker stock. Uh, I mean, as far as I can recall, with with what I've heard over the years, it isn't as strong as when I and Tom Brothers, different sector maybe, but that's closer to its all-time highs, even though it's pulled back quite a bit. 
So even with insectors, we've got a rotation through them as uh, as a digestive phase takes place. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYJUNE24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Real quickly before we go, wrap up the show for the week, um, and then you go to Steve Rose. I'm going, uh, just HL question came in. Yeah, if if HL Heckler Mining trading up uh, nine cents at 526 is able to get, I'd say, into the 543 area above that high, then all of a sudden I can talk about the 200 period moving average in the weekly chart at 487 being a liftoff. But until that happens, um, I'm just saying it's a work in progress. It is acting very nicely here. Next question came in. Where was it here? Um, Yes. So the, the other, another question is the dollar. Look, here's the dollar pulling back after a peak. E. I haven't. It, the nine hasn't crossed negative yet, but I'm just about to call this a sell signal, not yet a sell mode. But the weekly chart is still just in a trading band. If you look at EUR USD, this is the currency euro. Very nice rally because if you look at the USD JPY, finally because it always trades in the direction that the dollar goes, not in the same percentage, but the same direction started to pull back, but it's still holding really well. That means it's actually weak, the fact that it's so high. So I just wanted to cover that. Next thing I missed is um, just as, we, oh, as we're about to wrap it up, I, let me go through this again. Today, I, I, I usually use the, the Dow. I'm just going to say the S&P, I think, is more important right today. The S&P is at an all-time high at 5.544. If after 1.45 this afternoon, the S&P is trading, it's up seven, let's call it up eight. 
if the S&P is up more than 10, it's going to be a really nice close. But if there's just some kind of profit taking and all, if the S&P is only up three, it could actually give back quite a bit going into the close. So this is a day where it's light trading. And it's almost like a dartfish day. Wherever the price is going, money follows and then it stops dead. And if it reverses, money follows and then it stops dead. So I'm just saying, this is going to be a, a very important day for the weekly chart to see the close as far as I'm concerned chart-wise. But look at the monthly chart of the S&P. It's going right into the Chapman Wave Inside Track repellent zone. How does it handle July at the close? It's going to be fascinating. Have a wonderful weekend. Stay tuned for